Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Senator Kolbeck. It is such an honor to be here with you today and to see an entirely full room of concerned citizens and parents and grandparents to come out and help our communities. I wanted to just give you a little bit of understanding of how I got involved in this issue. I used to run our local education foundation with some wonderful parents in Ashland, and we kept hearing about this 21st century classroom. And we were a small town with small budgets that had been cut to the bone. So we began to do fundraising to get what we were hearing about, and we got uh, wireless infrastructure, Chromebooks, iPads, and then I went on to become the grant coordinator for our district, and in that role, I ran our government grants, but then I also found out about Donors Choose, which is a crowdfunding source for teachers, and we got all sorts of wireless technology for our teachers. And then a girlfriend of mine who's an electrical engineer indicated one night at book group that there could be biological effects. And so I began to investigate, and the, I was just astounded at how much information is out there, but nobody knows to even look. And so Ashland Public Schools began their investigation, and at the end, we became the first public school district in the United States to even have a sign like this hanging in all of our classrooms that advise us to turn off the Wi-Fi when not in use turn off the devices when not in use, and never use a device on your body. And then I went and I met with my senator, Karen Spilka, in Massachusetts, who we are just so fortunate. She's been elected as our Senate president this term. And I measured the radio frequency radiation coming off of her device and her district director's laptop, and both devices went off the charts into the red zone. And she was looking at me like, really? And I'm like, yes, and here's what the peer-reviewed published science tells us. This is extraordinarily biologically harmful. So Senator Spilka was gracious to put me with a lawyer in her office, and we crafted a very simple bill that says, let's get the right bright minds together at the state level and start addressing wireless radiation and public health. And then over the course of this session, we've had a number of bills pop up in Massachusetts, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Also on this journey, I've had the privilege with deep gratitude to Dr. Deborah Davis, who you'll hear from shortly, that uh, she put me in touch with some folks in the UK who were figuring this out and realized you can't just go out and fix this problem because people don't know it exists. So what we did is we established a very little nonprofit, but a very effective one, we think, called Wireless Education. And if you pick up this card before you leave today, we have distilled the science, the risks, the international best practices, and the medical best practices. In a half an hour, we can train your schools, we can train your families, we can train your workforce. And it kicks out a tip sheet at the end that's pretty handy, too. So, um, But I think what got our public schools to pay attention to this was when they read the legal fine print that comes with all of our devices. Does any, can I see a show of hands of anybody who has an iPhone with them today? Okay, if everybody who has one would please take it out and give me a nod once you're in a good place. And for those who don't have an iPhone, perhaps you use a Droid or a, another platform, you will find the same information in the legal fine print of all your wireless technology. So once you've gotten your phone out, please go into settings. And then a helpful little party trick is to remember the acronym GAL, like this GAL at this forum in Michigan taught me how to do this. So once you're in settings, scroll down just a little ways to general. That's the G. And then up at the top, hit about. And then scroll all the way down to legal. And the second from the last, you'll see legal. Hit that, and at the bottom of legal, you'll see RF exposure, which is radio frequency, microwave radiation that the industry politely calls energy. And in that legal disclaimer, in the fine print five levels down inside your device, it says two really important things. One, keep this device off your body, or you may exceed the FCC limits for public radiation exposure. And as the real experts will tell you today, those were never safety tested. And two, use a hands-free option because by simply holding that device in active mode, you have five or six separate antennas 
constantly pulsing microwave radiation to make a handshake with the nearest cell tower or router. And we don't need that, but we don't know any better, so we just use what the industry hands us. So you have a cellular antenna in there, you have a data, you have a Bluetooth, a Wi-Fi, a locator, and by now a public hotspot because the industry is using us as their network. So if you would be so kind, I would ask all of you to please, whatever devices you have, be they smart watches, iPads, anything that's emitting a wireless signal, please put your device in airplane mode for the duration of this conference today. If you need to communicate with somebody outside of this room, we would ask that you leave the room so that those who wish not to be bathed in microwave radiation have a safe environment in which to learn today. So airplane mode will oftentimes disable all the antennas, but I understand that some of the phones now will trip themselves back on, so make sure you've got all those different antennas turned off. Okay, and with that, I believe I'll be introducing Dr. Deborah Davis of the Environmental Health Trust. Oh, and if you haven't seen Generation Zapped yet, it's now available to the public. You can download it. It's probably the best way to open this conversation with people who have no idea what you're talking about. Thank you. <laughs>